it's Phil X. Yeah, yeah! And I'm in a different environment today because we're, uh, we're in a real studio, a uh, real studio that records for real because it's real and this is real. And I'm standing in front of, in front of a, a bunch of uh, really cool recording equipment. We have some cool amps here. We have uh, the Evil Robot, US Head, and we have a Rapoli uh, 69 Plexi Clone, and we have the 74 Marshall JMP, which we haven't plugged in yet. But uh, this is what we're gonna do. We got some guitars. We're gonna shoot some video. We're upgrading our whole thing. We shot how many? 383 videos at the old place. Fred and Americana, great place but it's time for a new scene with cool recording equipment. And yeah, like that, kind of, sort of, rock and roll. And uh, we got some other amps. We got the Evil Robot, and um, uh, because it kicks ass, and we have the Vox AC30 in the other room. And I'm saying and a lot. But aside from that, this guitar is a, a 55, Conversion, a Lentz conversion. Scott Lentz converted this. It was a 1955 uh, Les Paul that had P90s, and uh, he converted it, put a, a really beautiful top on it, humbuckers from the 59 year, right? So it's full 59 specs. So not only, it's not just converting it from a 55 to a 59 conversion, so to speak, but it's, it's kind of like, Everything is to 59 specs. It's got 59 pickups, and it has 59, these are PAFs. And, uh, and the wiring is all, everything's from like 59, it's crazy. Um, which you can, if you go on eBay, you can usually find 59 Gibson Les Paul pickups, but they're really, really expensive. Because the guitar is $400,000. If this was a 59 burst in this kind of condition, it would be worth like half a million dollars. It's crazy, because it is in insane condition. Um, the f a 55 Tunematic Bridge, which is awesome because that's when they started doing that, the 55, um, as opposed to the, the wraparound, which was the year before. And I believe these things are from 55 as well. So what you have here is something that looks like a 59 burst, but is actually the wood the bulk of the body, everything, the body, the, the, the wood on the neck, everything is pretty much like really old, <laughs> which is why it sounds awesome. So um, I'm gonna, wait, let's go. Do I wanna go clean? No, let's do this. That's the evil robot. Bam! <laughs> That's the treble pup. This is the neck pup. <laughs> yeah, middle position. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs> okay, I'm plugging it into the Vox AC30 so you can hear the clarity. Not just clarity, but a clean tone. The beauty in the Vox AC30 is the neck pickup, I have to admit. So you got that cool thing going on. And the middle position. Yeah. 
So back to the uh, evil robot. <laughs> So we have the evil robot set at 18 watts into a cabinet out there, so it sounds like a small amp, so you can hear the, what it would sound like in a small amp. And basically you get the rock tone, it's classic rock tone, it's cool, and you can play all kinds of like, uh... There. <laughs> Everybody just stop looking at me right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look all you want. Um, so. Um, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plug in the, the Rapoli, which is standing in for our 59, 69 Plexi vibe. What you get there is that whole Jimmy Page kind of a I did that. That's the. It's a big Jimmy Page thing. All right. So um, uh, yeah. So that's what we're getting right now. It's kind of like a '69. I don't have it too dirty. It's cranked really loud, which is really awesome that the cabinet's in another room, so I'm not fighting with it. Sort of speak. So um, yeah. So this is basically what's going on here. Um, the, the other cool thing about uh. Running a Marshall vibe is the neck pickup always sounds really cool too. And if you put like something on like the Bad Monkey, you get that kind of vibe. I'm also, I have the Bad Monkey, I also have an EP Booster, and people wonder why I use the EP Booster, and um, EP Booster is kind of like, EP stands for Echoplex, which a lot of people use the Echoplex, and when you use the Echoplex, obviously you get the echo, but you also get a little gain, the more, you, the more of it that you use in your mix, you get a little bit of gain, so what the EP Booster does is it gives you the exact same gain without the echo. 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 So, uh, <laughs> Um, that kind of thing. But um, the cool thing about that is it gives you a different kind of gain. So I'll show you the difference now. This is, I'll play this like. That's just the amp. This is a little bit of the EP booster at, when you call 10 o'clock. Oh, and then there's a bad monkey with a little, everything at one o'clock pretty much. So you hear the way, the difference. Maybe I didn't play enough. But you can, just in that chord, the one chord, you can hear the, uh, the EP booster sounds a little crunchier and the Bad Monkey sounds a little smoother. So what I like to do is like if I'm on stage, I just get in my head what I want and I'll, e I'll use either. So, um, and sometimes when I need a lot of gain for like when I use no neck pickup and I want to get the American Woman tone out of my, uh, my single rear pickup, I turn down the tone and I put both on, that way I have enough gain to do that. I'll give you an idea. This is not the neck pickup, this is the treble pickup with both boxes on, doing a... And what you're getting there is like all kinds of harmonic overtones that sound really, really cool that you don't usually get when you just use, say, the neck pickup with a fuzz box or something like that. I mean, everything gives you a different sound. Um, I also use that, but I love when you're playing like... This has got to be a neck pickup. It just has to. has to be a neck pickup. People are like, man, he doesn't use a neck pickup. Well, sometimes I do. In the studio, live, I don't care because I'm running around and singing my brains out and who wants to flip switches? All right, um, 
Also, in that song, Walk This Way, that I just, the insert of the uh, excerpt, insert, excerpt. What the hell's the difference? In, X. Okay, excerpt. <laughs> Everybody's like, yes. Um, the second solo in Walk This Way, when it goes. <laughs> Okay, I kind of screwed it up at the end there, but the thing is, one time I broke my B string in rehearsal and we were jamming that song, and I did the whole solo without my B string, and I can do it right now, not using the B string, check it out. So the cool thing about that is that it always gets my brain going, like maybe the guy came in and didn't have a B string, and maybe, hey, let's see what kind of solo I could do without a B string. Probably didn't happen, but that kind of goes through my head, you know, because I would do something like that. I don't feel like changing the string. Let's do a solo without the B string. I would totally do that. So maybe they did, maybe they didn't. We have to talk to those guys someday. Anyways, this is Phil X. We're at the atrium, Tommy Lee's studio. Tommy's being a dude and letting us come in here today and shoot some wicked guitars. And uh, I thought we'd start with this sucker because it's awesome. And um, thanks for checking us out. And want to thank you. We're almost at 30 million views, and that's amazing. And we also wanted to do something different for you guys too, because you know, 30 million views is humongous. We'll probably hit through 30 million views when this video comes out. The thing is, is we like to keep you guys, you know, keep it changing, keep it going, and good and awesome. And you know, like when they changed the Darren and Bewitched, nobody noticed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, you'll notice, all right. All right, thanks for hanging out. See you soon. Kick ass!